Number five strategy, I'm only giving out three strategies today, okay? Four, five, and six. We'll come back tomorrow with some more, all right? And by the way, if you're catching the live right now, drop me a hashtag live, or if you're on the replay later, hashtag replay. Appreciate that. And ask a question. If you ask a great question, somebody's going to win the book pack, the Loan Officer Strategy Guide, and the nine-figure blueprint that we wrote with Michael Mann, okay? So number five strategy is getting reviews, okay? Let me see. What do you say, Luca? How did you set up the video ads? Three separate ads or one with three videos? I'm setting them up as three separate ads with three separate budgets, okay? It can be in the same campaign, but it has to be, um, it needs to be three separate ad sets. The reason that you want to do that is because if you do it as a campaign budget or you put them all in the same ad set, Facebook will start to figure out which video is more popular and start to show that video. And that's when it can get annoying, right? Because then people start seeing the same video like a hundred times instead of three different videos 30 times, right? So it's just different. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's the best way to do it is you can have it in one campaign, but it needs to be three separate ad sets so that each one of them has a separate $1 budget attached to that. All right. So number five is getting reviews, okay? So basically, you know, I'm sure that you're already getting a lot of reviews. You know, if you're closing, let's just say, for example, if you're closing 10 loans per month, at minimum, you should be getting five, eight, 10, even more than 10 reviews online every single month. Because ultimately, you can get more than one review per person, right? You can get a video testimonial, you can get a written review, there's different things that you can get from each person. So, you know, you can, if you work it correctly, you can be even getting more than one review per person, right? Because you could get them to give you a video testimonial and then you could get them to leave you a written review online somewhere. So a lot of times, you know, people say, well, where do people leave reviews? Where's the most important places for people to do this, okay? So I'm gonna try to write this somewhat backwards so it will make sense for you guys. Let's see, three, wow, this is tough. I don't know if you guys write backwards, but man, that is really, wow, not terrible, but it's pretty difficult. <laughs> okay, so where should you be getting reviews? Number one is obviously with Google, okay? So I'm just gonna put like, can I even write a G here? I don't know, wow. Okay, so Google, okay, that's the number one place to get reviews. Why? Is because it's still the Mac daddy, okay? When people leave reviews on Google, um, that is going to, um, it's going to, it's going to rank in the maps ranking. It's, it's the number one place that you want to get reviews. Okay. So when you're thinking about where do I want to get my customers to leave reviews, you want to get them on Google. Now, what I recommend is never to send out, like, especially if you're sending some sort of blast, if you're like get inspired today and you're going to go get a bunch of reviews, don't just blast out your links to your whole database, because if they all go leave a review today, Google will take it down. Okay, Google will assume that you did that, that you created that flood of reviews and they'll take them down, okay? Um, I saw it happen with another guy. He got like 10 reviews in one day and literally like two days later, all, all the reviews are gone except for only one. Only one out of 10 still stayed up there. Google removed all the rest of them um, assuming that it was you know, done intentionally. So if you're doing this, you know, be reaching out to people individually so that you can, you know, trickle the reviews in. If you're getting one review a day, one review every other day on Google, you know, that kind of thing, then it's totally different than if you just slam them in with 10 or 15 or 20 reviews at the same time. So, you know, if you're if you're at the house, reach out to your past clients, especially if they have never left a review for you, reach out to your past clients and I'll even share with you what to say in just a second, okay? So number two place that you can be getting reviews is, is on Facebook, right? So Facebook, those reviews, they show up on Google as well. They show up online if people are searching. Um, you need to get Facebook reviews. A lot of these places, they won't start showing up on the reviews, like um, in the search engine results, until you have at least three reviews. Okay, so in general, you're going to need at least three reviews before... You know, if you look for different people online today, it'll have like the stars and stuff showing up on Google. And that's how you do that, right? Is you have at least three reviews, five stars, and now it'll start ranking. It'll start showing the stars with the three reviews next to it in, in Google. If you start, you know, if you go look for yourself in Google, for example, see what shows up, you know, and if you want some feedback on what's showing up, just uh, Google yourself, you know, take a screenshot, drop it in the comments and I'll check it out after this video is over. Okay. Number four or number three place that you want to be getting reviews is on Yelp, okay? 
the kind of backwards why there, but you get it. Um, with Yelp, again, it's it's a place that people who are Yelpers, they're loyal to Yelp. They're going to go there. They're going to look for everything. Okay, um, Yelp has a ton of traffic. If you ever want to know how much traffic is actually people are looking for mortgage and real estate phrases in your market, you can call Yelp. They have a paid program. You don't need the paid program. You can get 100% of the value off of Yelp without the paid program. Um, but the reason that you can call them and talk to them is you can ask them how many searches are happening per month in my market and they'll tell you, you know, so you can have an idea. Is it worth, is it worth the effort there for you? Right. Um, okay. Number four place is obviously, you know, the big, you know, bad people on the block, right? Which I guess that's, that looks more like an S for you guys. Um, is, is basically Realtor and Zillow.com, right? So ultimately people are still going there. And, and so you wanna, you wanna have a presence, okay? So if you can get people to be leaving reviews on Zillow and Realtor.com, with Zillow, it's almost 100% based on the amount of, rev of reviews. So if you go look, you'll notice that in your local market that they're all sorted by the amount of reviews. So it's something that obviously, depending on how much competition you have locally, you're gonna have to put some time, energy, and effort into it, right? It's not gonna happen overnight. But these things right here, this is all about capturing ghost clients, right? So what's a ghost client? It's somebody that you don't even know is researching you and is interested in working with you. Because a ghost client is out there Googling, checking out stuff, verifying, doing their own research. And if they like what they see, then they message you, then they reach out to you, they call you. And if they don't like what they see, you never even know that they existed, right? And this is how you can be able to grab some of that extra free organic traffic that's out there on Google, that's out there looking around in your market is to having these reviews online. So if you don't have a process to get these reviews, I'll just tell you my process really simply, right? It's make a phone call the night before you go to closing, you have to attend the closing. Make a call the night before and say, hey, super pumped about closing tomorrow. Let me ask you something, Philip. When, when we were starting this process, like what were you the most scared about? And they're gonna tell you what they were afraid of, right? I was afraid we wouldn't be able to qualify or I was afraid we'd end up living in the ghetto or whatever things, you know? And when they tell you that, you say, thank you so much for, for sharing that. You know, how, since we've been working together, how did I help you to overcome that? And they're gonna tell you how you helped them overcome that. And now what you've done is you've created a story that they can tell tomorrow at closing on video, right? Because what happens oftentimes is we whip out the camera and we scare them at closing and they're not ready. The woman has her hair in curlers or whatever. They don't even know what to say. And that's why they end up saying like, oh, Nick was awesome. He was excellent. He really helped us out a lot, right? And it's like this super generic um, review that means nothing. It has no meat and potatoes in it, you know? And it has, when somebody else watches it, it doesn't, it doesn't make them move. It doesn't, it doesn't have any emotions into it. So by helping them have a story now, you can say, hey, would you mind tomorrow after we do all the papers, if I would just set up my camera and you guys can, I can leave the room and you guys can record a quick video and just tell that story. The reason I ask you to do that is because I know there's other people out here that feel the exact same way you did. And if they see how we helped you, then maybe there's a chance we'll be able to help them too. Would, would that be okay with you? And almost 90 or to 100% of the time, people are gonna say yes to that question because now you've told them what to say. They, you know, you've helped them create the story of what to say. And, that's a lot of times when you look at, go look at your own reviews online. If you have online reviews, go look at them and see what people say. Oftentimes it's gonna be like really surface level. It's kind of a junky review in general, right? Because it's just gonna say, oh, Cindy helped me a ton. Cindy was awesome. She was so great. I loved working with her. You should work with her too. I highly recommend Cindy. But it's like, what did she even do for you? How does she help you? What's her, what, what was her role in your, whatever you did with her, right? What was that client provider relationship like? I mean, there's literally no information about any of that, okay? So you can help them do that by having that simple, um, by doing those, you know, that simple phone call. Okay, now how you get these reviews? I do this about a week after closing. So ideally is around the time of closing, send them a pizza. If you know when your clients are moving into their house and you know, okay, on Thursday night, you know, Thursday they're moving into the house, Call them up and tell them, hey, I'm going to have some pizzas delivered to your house on Thursday. Would 5 o'clock be all right? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so shoot them some pizzas. And then you can just send them an email a couple of days later and say, hey, I hope those pizzas were awesome. By the way, you know, online reviews are super important today. 
And it would mean so much to me if you would leave a review on one of these sites and just tell people your story. Um, here are some key words that are really important because it'll help people find my find your review and find my profile. And man, it means so much that you would do this. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the pizza. So what am I doing with that email right there? Right? I'm reminding them in the beginning that I sent the pizza. So I'm trying to reenact that law of reciprocity, you know, because I've already given them pizza. I'm reminding them at the end it's pizza. Also in the middle, I'm only giving them about two or three links that I want them to leave reviews. So even though here I'm sharing four, if you share four or five, people won't be able to pick. They can't decide, right? So just give them two or three choices. They'll be able to pick one of those to leave a review. And ultimately you'll end up with a video testimonial and you'll end up with a written review online, okay? So you can focus on that today. Get this process in place. Like just know that how are you gonna handle it? What can you do, what can you do this week to reach out to five past clients and get them to leave a review for you online while they're all hanging out of their house, right? Drop a, maybe you make a Facebook post and you say, hey, I know we're all stuck in the house. I'm trying to think what, what you could offer them right now, like some kind of delivery. Is there some sort of cheap delivery thing? Probably not, right? Or maybe you just give them a $5 Starbucks card. Hey, I've got $100 worth of Starbucks cards I'm gonna be giving away today. Shoot me a PM if you want one. I just have one small favor to ask, right? And then they're gonna shoot you a message. Hey, oh, what's your, what do you need me to do, man? I'd love to get a Starbucks card. Hey, will you do me a favor and just pick one of these three places and drop me a review, right? And just space that out over time so that you can be adding those into, your, into it. Okay, 